Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution Sandbox Mode. That's uh, Isla Nublar to me and you. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you're new here and you'd like to see lots of more creative gaming for grown-ups, all you have to do is go ahead and click subscribe. So, uh, in our sandbox mode we are working on um, just like a well-rounded park really. We're not doing a Jurassic World remake or anything like that, just kind of building a nice looking park as best we can. So. We've got some smaller part, uh, smaller pens as we come in with some of the smaller herbivores, and then we've got the uh, the main area with the uh, the lake and the uh, what's it called uh, innovation center, and then we're going to have some larger uh, carnivore pens and a big sort of herbivore. Uh, um, What's the word? Safari kind of thing with the gyrospheres. As soon as they're unlocked, I'm playing this alongside the single player, so I'm having to go into the career mode and lock a little bit and then come back over here. So for everyone who keeps asking where sandbox is, you're just going to have to let me, you know, crack on with the career mode as well. But check those videos out. We still play those with a, uh, a sort of level of creativity in mind as we build. Uh, I'm very much one of those guys who spends far too much time making the place look good, often to the detriment of gameplay, to be honest with you. Uh, so today what we're working on, uh, mostly a hotel area for guests who are staying in the park and we also do a few other little bits and bobs a couple more pens for herbivores and a uh, sort of security area and also we place um, the Hammond Creation Center where it's going to be because at the moment we've just got one dumped across the other side of the park just for um, creating the dinosaurs we want uh, we're actually going to place it in uh, in the right place so we're going to have three hotels um, the hotels themselves I'd love a couple of different skins for these they'd be really good but uh, this is all the same skin so what I've done is try to um, tear the ground down just a little so that these have a bit of a um, uh, a bit of a varied skyline basically so by by rotating them and uh, placing them at different heights it just gives you a bit of a, a change of scenery as they come down but I definitely wanted more than one because I wanted to build a sort of little uh, village almost little sort of open plaza area uh, really these would all be the same hotel these are just different areas of them or something like that but we do actually go and call each wing its own uh, its own name later on uh, but we'll go through those when we get to them so here I wanted a small plaza area that links all of these up. Um, again, oh man, what I would give for a few sort of statues or um, plant, uh, you know, plants or trees or some palms or something like that. That would be really that work really well here, I think. Uh, but instead, we don't uh, at the moment, and we have to sort of get creative with paths, and we have to get creative with um, the the few bits of uh, terrain management we have. So things like uh, trees and uh, lakes and things like that. So uh, it's gonna be fun to see what we can do. Hopefully you'll like how it turns out. And then we have the monorail here. First sort of proper monorail station. So we have one here and then one down by the main street. We'll also have another one round by the uh, the carnivore paddocks at the base of the island. And then that gives uh, sort of three decent points for people to get on and off. Uh, so here then, uh, having lots of fun creating some funky patterns using two of the different um, paths there. It just kind of breaks it up a little bit, makes it a little bit varied and it uh, looks pretty good I think, personally. And then we have to get some power to it. Somebody has very um, uh, nicely pointed out in the comments of, I think, episode 2. Oh, oh I was going to say hashtag spooky door, but that wasn't very spooky, was it, that one? It was a tiny little squeak. It wasn't much of a spooky door at all, that one. Um, yeah, somebody in the comments of the last episode of this has pointed out that the electric fences actually sort of carry... Oh, there was a good spooky door. Uh, sort of carry the electricity. So uh, if you use electric fences through the park, you don't have to have as many of these pylons, uh, which I think is a great idea. And uh, unfortunately, the, the footage was recorded by the time I saw that. Uh, so I've got to go back. But in the next episode, we'll probably look at... Um, uh, changing that up a little bit and using some more electrified fences to move... Oh, there was a good hashtag spooky door. Uh, we move some of the electricity around rather than using pylons. So here I'm going to take out one of our new dinos, uh, which is a uh, Chrysodosaurus. Um, I wanted something for that very tiny little pen at the front of the park that we built in the last episode. And um, I, I, in the single player, I found that those Chrysodosauruses prefer to be on their own. Uh, maybe they can manage, you know, two of them a pair, but they're more than happy to be on their own. So I thought that would work really well uh, as like the old herbivore that sits on its own. So the sort of thing in a regular zoo you would have is maybe something like a. Um, let me think. What would what would you have like one big herbivore like a like a bull or something like that maybe, um, you know or. Um, 
maybe even something like a gor no, no gorillas normally are groups, aren't they? I don't think it's uh, animals that you usually find singularly in zoos. Um, maybe like a rhino or something like that. Maybe just one rhino because they're they're relatively endangered, aren't they? So something like that. The old the old girl has been at the zoo for you know many years and just kind of lives out her life. That kind of thing I was going for there. And the, and the Chrysosaurus fits that perfectly. Here, I'm building a little pen that I wanted to um, kind of break up the path there because we haven't got any animals over here yet. Obviously, this will be uh, the large uh, herbivore safari over this side of the island. But I wanted a f one here that I could specifically make... Um, um, as a viewing point for that hotel there, basically. Uh, I know that in the Animal Kingdom over in the States, they have um, they have lodges that sort of look out, look out over onto uh, the giraffes and things like that. And there's obviously there's many, many places in Africa that do it as well. And I love that idea of being able to sell a room and they're like, you know, you can actually see... Uh, see the dinos, uh, you know, as you wake up in the morning, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, that's what we do there. And we end up building a couple or growing or whatever you want. To, I don't know what's the right word really for dinosaurs. Creating, I guess, a couple of um, Edmontosauruses that go in there and uh, live out their days. The, um, the, the size needed for dinos is much smaller than I originally thought for the pens, that is, to keep them happy. And it's actually a bit more realistic than I thought, to be honest. When I first started, for some reason, I just was building huge pens everywhere. But actually, you can see there, I've done that. Uh, I've built electricity there purely because I didn't know what was going in there. So I thought, I'll put the best one we've got there. And I'm looking forward to unlocking the concrete ones to give us a bit of variation. But at the moment, uh, I've used the electricity one there. But yeah, they were building on them a lot, uh, a lot bigger than um, they were probably needed to be. So uh, so now I've sort of made them a little bit smaller and it works out a lot better. It looks a bit more realistic. So here is the uh, Chrysosaurus. I have put her in the wrong pen. I have put her in with the Dracorex and I'm here desperately trying to find a way of stopping it and I just can't do it. So we've got to go in. If you can't um, you know, do something right, you've got to do it yourself. So here what I'm going to do is get ready to take her out basically she's going as you can see look there's where she's landing you can see the Dracorex heading all around uh, so as soon as she lands we're going to knock her out and literally just move her to the other side of that path you can just see just to the north there that's where she's going to live actually um but here unfortunately i've just clicked i just clicked the wrong place basically so here we go i don't do this very often but i thought i want to get there and get there in quick and i actually got a couple of uh, achievements for that one for knocking a dinosaur out and another one for knocking her out while she's running i think it was so yeah a couple of achievements there you go nice and easy <laughs> without even trying so then we place her down where she's meant to be in her proper home and uh, i just noticed that area there is a bit open so i'll throw a bit of path in like i say eventually hopefully we'll have some decorations we can put into those i i, I keep saying it I, we may never see it you know this is very much a management game uh, not so much about necessarily making pretty parks, it's more about making them run well and dealing with their uh, natural disasters and, and dinosaurs getting out and stuff like that. I do understand that, um, but you know, from the makers of Frontier and uh, from the makers of Plant Coaster and also to an extent Elite Dangerous, you know, there's a bit of customization in that as well. I would love to see uh, just a little bit of customization just to really kind of flesh out your parks a little. Uh, here we go, then, our two Edmontosaurus. So I'm going to drop these out and move them over to their new home up by their hotels and then we're going to move this Hammond Creation Lab to where it's going to be which is going to be part of a, um, a sort of backstage security area uh, down by the uh, the front of the build front of the park there with the where the uh, the, the main street is there and where the ACU is okay so this area here uh, we're going to basically fill out as like i say a little bit of a backstage security area where they come and uh where but one where new dinos are created but then also where the um uh you know security teams are based um uh, most of it's just law you know it's the actual security teams of uh the acu i suppose but they have these security buildings like we have the Innovation Center for Entertainment and there's a science one as well. There's a security one. Uh, so I'm going to place that down here as well. It kind of fits. It's like a big bunker and it ties in quite nicely with the um, uh, with the idea of this sort of being like the security base right in the middle of the park. It can reach everywhere pretty quickly. Uh, and also it really has a, uh, some original Jurassic Park vibes to it as well. It looks it looks very much a bit like the, uh, the original sort of Jurassic Park feel, which is pretty cool. Uh, talking of the movies, I went to see Jurassic World uh, Fallen Kingdom the other day. Uh, it wasn't the sort of thing I would normally have gone and seen at the pictures, to be honest with you, but um, I, I 
went with work so I was paid to go and watch it so it's probably made me feel a little bit better about it than uh, than it would have done if I was uh, just going on my own but you know what it wasn't actually that bad it was a bit of a popcorn chugger you know a bit of a sort of popcorn flick um I didn't I felt it was fine pretty much forgot everything about it as soon as I walked out of the cinema is that you know that kind of moving uh, but overall it wasn't too bad one thing I did quite like actually I'm not going to give any spoilers here by the way if you haven't seen it but one thing I did quite like is there was a couple of nods to the original movie not just Jurassic World uh, right back to the original Jurassic Park um, that I actually thought was really quite nice actually and and it made me it made the film a little bit more um oh, what's the word like it had a bit more uh, gravitas to it I guess maybe that's probably not the best word for, for what I'm trying to think of but it definitely felt a little bit more solid and a little bit more sort of rooted uh, in the in the Jurassic Park world more so probably than I actually felt that Jurassic Park 2 and 3 did because I wasn't particularly fan of those to be honest with you as much as I love the original uh, I actually felt that this one paid paid homage to the original better than the uh, than the original sequels did um there's a there's a one little bit again i'm going to try and keep this spoiler free as possible there's one little bit where a girl uh, is trying to pull down a uh, a, a draw like a, a, a door a pull down a door in front of her to, to stop a dino getting to it and it's very reminiscent of the uh of the young girl in the very first movie pulling down the the uh, the cupboard drawer in the kitchen and you know just little nods like that um i actually thought we were, uh, were really quite good so uh, yeah here we go we're upgrading the power here because we're starting to drink it a little so uh, we're starting to upgrade here these guys aren't too happy they need a little bit more forest so we place that in purposefully making sure that we keep the forest away from the hotel because people are going to be paying extra that they get to see the Edmontosaurus is from their hotel room so we want to make sure that that part at least is pretty open you see uh, check in on the Cronosaurus there she's more than happy she's uh, she's loving life and then here you can see the Edmontosauruses, so this hotel becomes Edmontosaurus Hotel. Uh, Edmontosaurus View, I think I call it. And then this one here is uh, Island's Edge Plaza, because it's right on the edge of the, uh, the land there. And this one becomes the heart of science because it's right by the uh, the science department there so uh, the, you know they've all the sort of typically ish names i feel uh, and there we go so we've got time for the next episode hopefully we'll have unlocked a few more dinos and the gyrospheres and we can start working on our herbivore safari thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you have you can give us a like it really helps out like the channel and if you're not already don't forget to subscribe any thoughts queries or suggestions you can pop them down in the comments and if you fancy a chat you can find me on twitter i'm at john t sparrow if you'd like to join me in the geekies and geeks you can do so over on our geekies and discord server you'll find the link for that in the description thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next one